growing up is realizing that Squidward was the most relatable character on SpongeBob. And I'm like, oh, maybe God. growing oh, up God. is realizing that Visser 3 was the most relatable character in Animorphs. <laughs> in 1996, Scholastic began publishing Animorphs. Over the next six years, Catherine Applegate and her husband, Michael Grant, under the pseudonym K.A. Applegate, produced 54 main series books, several spin-offs, and inspired a TV series, graphic novels, and a cult following. We can't tell you where we live. We can't even tell you our last names. But we can tell you our thoughts and feelings on this series, book by book. I'm Miranda. I'm Eddie. And I'm Chris. And we are... The The (laughs) Anadorks! These may be kids' books, but we discuss dark themes and mature content. There may also be some explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. Okay, should we jump in to finally discussing? We did it. We did a whole second season, and it turned out long. (laughs) It took a year. It took a year. It took a while. It took a while. Well, you know... Everything, um, I don't know what to say about it. I don't have any jokes yet. It's there very no hard to, to contain season two of Anadark because it, we've spent so much of it on Andalite Chronicles that it feels like we've actually done two seasons. In, yeah, and, it and feels our like seasons we did season are made up. two and then we did Andalite yeah. Chronicles. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, our seasons are made up just like winter isn't real anymore. We took it's, a break. That's you know, very true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We took a break between season one and season two. We are not planning to take a break between season two and season three. So no, because no. we were we recorded so much content that we were. I was literally able to be out sick for a month and a half. Yeah, and we yeah, didn't stop releasing. It's episodes. crazy how much we still have. Possibly two more episodes in the like. I have to edit it this weekend, but we still have two more. As of this recording, we have two more episodes coming out on Andalite Chronicles. Yeah. So like, what we're recording now won't even be heard by our adoring public for three weeks. Yeah. What we have left after turning our podcast into an Andalite Chronicles podcast. Yeah, we should. Have I, just, uh, what I'm learning is we should have just done the Andalite Chronicles. Yeah. Yes. And here's the thing: like, are we going to go back in? Like, are, when, when, are, like, at the end of this podcast, should we just start the whole thing over with book one, or should we just right now start Andalite Chronicles? Start over Andalite again? Chronicles again, <laughs> please. Like, no. what's the, what's the Ouroboros here? Like, where is our journey? I would read part two and part three again eventually. I think I'd skip part one at this point. Part I feel- one didn't. Yeah, we we had Which one struggled had the with Mustang? part one. Part two at the Mustang. Part two at yeah. the Mustang. Yeah, but it had the tax on hunger. Yeah. 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 But part one also had all the stupid stuff about, like, Andalite politics that was none of the stuff about Andalite politics that I wanted. You know what I mean? Right. It was like I wanted a fucking parliament scene. Right. I want, yes, I want, yeah, I, that's, like, Prequel oh, trilogy there's fan kind fiction, of content. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If there's, like, if there's... Where is a, Senator Amidala? <laughs> <laughs> if there's, like, fan fiction for parliaments of the Council of Thirteen or whatever... Oh, that's where the they Youth don't Council, know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but where they don't know who the ruler is. Lie I am, that. oh my I think god, it's like I a big game that. of coup. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. yeah, you can't all be the duke. Come on. I think That's I'm stupid. now reading Animorphs purely with the hope that I will see a scene of that. Like I want. Uh, we don't get. Uh, we get Visser, I guess, but there's no Yerk Chronicles or anything. No. like that. Right. But I just want to know in about tiny it. chairs. Yes, they are. Or are they yeah. in the? Okay, yeah. or are they, they in, have to we, be. They I have thought we said goblets. So are goblets. the goblets on <laughs> chairs? <laughs> <laughs> if for some reason the flashback I'm having is to a scene in Pan's Labyrinth where she thinks she makes it to where she wants to go in the movie, and it's so alien and foreign to her. Like I feel like if I ever see any true Yurk lore, I'm not even going to be able to trust it. Are I'm you talking be like, about? Did I die? Yeah. Are you talking about the scene at the very end? where, yeah. spoiler alert, she is dead and it's like this regal fairy court that has no resemblance to anything she's seen yep. the rest of the... Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it is I sort of like... her picture of, like, heaven and she thinks her real mom and dad are there and, like, it's... That's I mean... all you need. Yeah, I mean, and death, dead is dead, as dead you'll know from Lost. <laughs> oh, I, man. I, I think it would be the chairs from Pan's Labyrinth. I can see that now, but I had kind of imagined them like the 
Jedi throne room. Those this pillowed mm. uh, yes, yeah, uh, round chairs. You know that Mace Windu sits now, on. When they did the Jedi throne room, how many <laughs> like because they should have done chase lounges. Mm. <laughs> they should have done and like leaning back like this, like come on in, Anakin. Yeah. You know, like, I you're <laughs> right that like I feel like a lot of sculptures and paintings of like important people of the time portray them that way, and yet we never portray them that way in important moments. And I think that mm-hmm. that is something yeah, we're lacking. I think we every make- single parlor <laughs> like like. When I do a production of Julius Caesar and they're on the Senate floor, everybody is going to be reclining regally <laughs> with yeah. like a tiger. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Or yeah. or replace all statues in the world with the same people but on a toilet. Uh, or like, you know, if it, they're bad statues, get rid of them. The I'm just thinker, saying but like, it's a toilet is definitely well, but that, a real that, that, that one one's the only one that is a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one he, he's just that's hiding how you get that wasn't a toilet. Okay, you yeah, can't think too long. Especially given toilet. that it's the gates of hell, like for me personally, living you call my the life toilet on the, the toilet. gates of hell? No, no, no. The thinker is from the gates of hell. <laughs> oh, you're right. Right. Sorry. <laughs> this is a Rodan <laughs> thing, right? Is but that I'm saying yeah, yeah, it's a Rodan thing. But I'm saying like my personal hell would be if I had to sit on the toilet forever. Like it's true. Your butt yeah. gets tired. Yeah, you're a bitch. Yeah, yeah. it's. We well, need a squatty potty. Like the thinker uh, should yeah, be on a squatty sure. potty at least. That's true. The yeah. human condition is humiliation. So like, for some of us the it's a one... fear. For some of us it's a kink. But like, let's get it done. Yeah. Yes, yes. And the one thing humans can be said to create other than a big old mess is poop. Yeah, which is a big old mess. Yeah, to some. <laughs> to so, some. I, well, I think we've said this on. <laughs> Um, I think we've said this. So on- what are we talking yeah, about? Okay. What's our podcast about uh, right now? I think we've said this on the record before, but I kind of want to jump in to how there was a moment where our season two ended with book 12. The mm. reaction. Mm. There wasn't there wasn't the a reaction. moment. There was a there was an alternate time. Yes, yes, yes. Where we, well, there was where, a moment yeah. where it could have been that or it could have been what we created. And yes, Um and I, <laughs> we decided to do Andalite Chronicles. Yes, it's true. I pushed it's true. for doing Andalite Chronicles. I thought we'd get it done. We were we were deciding this in early August. I thought we'd get it done by the end of September, early October, and I <laughs> believed that. And this was a, a lesson for all of us, but <laughs> it was a lesson for me, uh, especially. So, um, if you ever wanna, if you ever wanna like intimately become aware of some of your favorite people's uh, habits with time management and scoping out processes, start a podcast with them because true. we've all made some wacky guesses, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and we all have to live with that because we're still here. I That's even true. drew up a calendar. I was like, no, look, guys, look. <laughs> That's we, true. We will. We'll get through part one in this in two weeks. We'll get through part two in this much time. And I was confident. I really thought. <laughs> And then we thought we would take the fall off, um, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. while well, we released and then the fall through became, December, the, <laughs> yeah. the fall the fall became December, and then December became January, and now here we are. And yeah. then January, holy shit! So many curveballs, so many curveballs, very balls. many curveballs. Yeah, so yeah. many curveballs. Yeah, who'd so, have thought? Who'd and have thought? We basically, I would say, right around late September, maybe all of September, October. We burned out, I think, is what we can say yeah. happened yeah. now in yeah. retrospect. And uh, I'm still proud of what we did. Yes. Like, yeah. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I think the Andalite episodes, despite being a meandering mess, uh, uh, <laughs> they are, they are part some one, of my favorite I think. Jokes. Part one, I think we couldn't get into part one, too, which was part of the problem. And like, after, I think the succession, as we're going to talk about, um, the relevance of some of the things in the books had taken a bit of a turn, <laughs> you know, like not yeah. the books, things that happened in books 10, 11 and 12 didn't all feel or, and nine, uh, majorly nine, actually, uh, didn't all feel that important. Yeah. And so we were when we got into Andalite Chronicles, I think we were all really excited to get into something that felt important. And then book one of Andalite Chronicles didn't feel as important as I wanted it to. And I was just like, oh, my God, it's going to be more of this nonsense. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Andalite's running around a ship 
captain this and this or that and like yeah. <laughs> but yeah. then it did take off it did take off did. i really loved it Andalite did. chronicles yeah i think like the only thing that like stresses me out about it is like it was even though books that meant nothing in particular like you know i know rachel's book is controversial with jonathan taylor thomas but right I still liked that it was building a shared lore between yes. the kids, like, yeah. and that it was something that, like, there were going to be callbacks to, and yeah. Well, I mean, so which- that's what I think, Miranda, I think what you say is definitely true. It's not what, I think part of this is maybe a problem of Andalite Chronicles, even though we don't expose ourselves to that much of the fandom, like, we do try, I think, to, we want to go in and experience these books ourselves. Andalite Chronicles is... It's hard not to hype it up, even just the fact that it's a Chronicles book. It's longer. Right. Mm-hmm. But also the fandom mm-hmm. does hype up Andalite Chronicles. And so I think they we do. didn't know exactly. I, th- I think we thought we were going to get some essential text. And I'm sure it actually will feel like that and is. But it did feel, um, the first part of that felt, I don't want to say pulpier, but like it just felt, uh, the important stuff didn't come until later in that book. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah. And I also think it didn't feel important, like you said, at first, or not important in the way that we thought it would. And also, everything felt important because we were learning an entirely new cast of characters yes, and yeah, a new yeah. world. So it felt really dense in that way. Yeah, like our mechanism for paying attention to things and doing like analysis and also just keeping track of everything. Like We were like, everything is signal, nothing is noise. But yeah. Then, it ended up. We had to talk about no. everything in part one. Even if we didn't care, it was technically relevant. Yes. So like- it felt that way. It felt that way because I am a person who struggles with uh, accurately assessing the urgency of information put in <laughs> front of me. And so I mean, it's just like. Would you I say that's why we go the through ships. these books with a f- fine tooth comb? Like, fine tooth comb, or, yes. And we're yeah. like, well, I mean, has Asher has Alpha seen Rhodes before? Like, that's where we're yeah, at. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, like, well, Rhodes, that was a big thing. The cloth for me was a big sticking point. And yeah. I know, Taste, I know I really harped on that. Pop Tobin's like Toby. we, a, we the, the other funny thing is going back is like I thought I just listened to so the episode we're about to release we talk about uh, which is um, we're calling it rimming the pocket verse just so you know <laughs> yes. which episode we're talking about um, so if we get forcibly removed for explicit content from Apple Podcasts you'll hear it here i guess yeah, yeah. Like, we'll rename the yeah. episode and i don't know what it'll be called there, then. we don't know Maybe. why they would flag it because we're just talking right. about traversing the outer the rim, rim of right. something. Yeah. Yeah. When when one goes to the rim of a volcano and and circumnavigates it, yeah, is you're not going to say circumnavigating. Uh, no, you're going to say your audience. Rimming. Yeah. I rimmed, I rimmed it. it. Yeah. Right. I, we were you, rimming the like, volcano. <laughs> we, we have to <laughs> we have to keep word counts down, my guys. Like, come on. Like, and when they're when they're a, taking your margarita glass and they're they're putting the salt on the rim and you realize they're, they're about to stop. Salt. They're yeah. rimming, they're it, rimming with salt. it with and salt. And if they're about to Somebody stop and you want a little more salt, you say, "Keep rimming it. Keep rimming it." You know? <laughs> keep <laughs> rimming it. And then you go, "I wanted this rimmed with sugar," and you're like, "Well, maybe." Bring me one rimmed with sugar and I'll drink both, you know? Right. Yeah. And r- really, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. So we don't know why they would I take have down one the more, episode. I have, but, uh. I have one more example, but I, I don't know if it's, it might be too illustrative, but it's like, if you've ever done analingus <laughs> and, and you're using your tongue to please someone via the analingus, look it up. But you would, Which has you nothing would do to do with the term we're talking about now. Nothing to do with it at all. But you would you would you would you would go around the rim and and that would be an appropriate time Just to, to maybe use this new word. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. The, the the max and the min. Yeah. And uh yeah. Yes. Um why were we talking about that? Oh, be- oh so my point was that in this episode <laughs> we talk about Andalite toe beans and as I was listening to the episode back, I was like, you know, I think we talked about it before. We did. We named 
an episode of Andalite Chronicles, Andalite Toe Beans, and I had yep, completely yep. forgotten. So yes, that's, that's how so, long it is. Yeah, if you that guys feel like you my... got lost in Andalite Chronicles, we also got lost yeah. in Andalite Chronicles, just like Book Eleven. That, yeah, that had one of my favorite. When we did that episode, you and I had the funniest role play text message thread. Do you remember this? Where I was like Master Toe Beans or something like that, or like King, like Queen Toe Beans. No, do you remember this? I'll send you pictures of it. I, I really hope I still have it. I I know I sent it to Miranda, but it is very, very funny. Lord Tobins. I was, yeah, <laughs> Lord Tobins. That's uh, who The I great was. thing about not remembering uh, jokes like this is that you get to laugh at them like it's the first time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, speaking of book 11, I kind of feel like I in so retrospect. I thought you were going to say speaking of Tobins. <laughs> I think that was my favorite book from this run. At least it's the one really? that I think. Maybe the episodes were my favorite. Maybe that's what, maybe talking about it was my favorite. But I think I just had so much fun recording book 11 and then also listening back to it. Um, like, and they, oh, cool. those books feel so far away f- for me now that, like, I, um, I don't know if that's an accurate assessment to how it felt to read it. But I was going to say, like, if I was going to pick a favorite book, I'd pick book eight. Although it feels a little bit like cheating. Hmm. Why does it feel? Oh, because we'll I feel like book eight sort of belongs more with the first set of books than it does yeah. with nine through twelve. Yeah, I agree with I, that. I like. I'm kind of torn, and I feel like you guys are going to hate me for this. But I'm right now. No joke. I'm somewhat split between nine and twelve. Twelve, um, I'm not surprised by, but nine is a bit of a shock. Nine. I really liked, there were some accidental things that happened in Nine that I actually think back on very fondly, such as Cassie helping the skunks on the side of the road with her dad, not to mention <laughs> the um, creation of the lore of the Daps and Lumber Company. Daps yeah. and Lumber and Company, yeah. That like, was... for some fucking reason, the fact that they put in this detail that there was a shell company that they were using <laughs> as a front for Yurk activities. And that also it like, was like a Yurk swear word yeah, or something. Yeah. Book D-A-P. 10 was also incredible. I think Book 10 would be up there for me. Book 10 too. is, look, they're all up there. <laughs> Book 10 is like... I don't know why, but I could feel that it was never going to be important again. It felt like the Chi were going to be, you know how everybody talks about in Lord Lord of the Rings, why didn't they just take the eagles? Like, why didn't they just fly on the eagles? It's like, I feel like the rest of the series is going to be, why didn't we just get the Chi to help us? Like, Do you think they don't come back again? I feel like we might, like, I feel like we're going to get a phone call. I feel like he's going to be like... We've sensed a disturbance <laughs> in the force, but we will not get involved or oh, something. I really was hoping if that Eric King would show up every six books or so. That'd like, be nice. Um, but... I'd like to have, I feel like we have to start having characters like that. Like the Elemist is going to be like that, I think. Um, yeah, no, the Elemist t- is definitely going to come back. I mean, back. the Elemist has been around but like, a lot lately. The Chi, like... like showed up and then immediately nerfed themselves. Like, they were nerfed, they unnerfed themselves, and then they re-nerfed then they nerfed themselves. themselves. Yeah, It's true. It's the, like, it's the northern exposure thing where the plot has to reset every episode or every mm. three episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you're going this this long as a series, not that much cannot change in any one given episode. It's true. Yeah. Especially if you have other people working on the books and you don't know what they're going to write. Like, you can't just paint them and do, oh, Yep, Rachel has robot arms. No, she kept her original <laughs> arms, but she also has robot arms now. They just don't mention it in books 25 through 40. <laughs> book, book 11 is what I'm looking forward to getting more, though, because I kind of think it's so fun. If you know you're going to have the rubber band effect where everything has to go back to the way it was... I can't wait for them to do more extreme things like book Yeah, then it or, then it's fun when it really spirals out of control for sure. Like that they got to be like everything went crazy and they all got eaten by a monster, but Jake managed to send himself back in time, so it's all good. Like Yeah. Oh wait, no, that's book twelve. It's eleven. It? Oh no, I'm mixed up. Damn it. 
Oh, we should start calling them by their names to clear up the confusion. Right. I'm sorry. Book 11, The Forgotten. That might be why oh, it's that, so hard for you to remember. <laughs> that's Is that actually the title? Yeah. Uh, yes. yeah so that's is. unfucking oh, real. That's should... the one title that actually helps. <laughs> well, I'm going to run through the list quick. So, because we're not, we haven't talked about Megamorphs at all, but Megamorphs with the Valik. So we started, it is really a weird shape to this, like, season that we made. Well, you picked a weird font. Yeah. Oh, you're talking. Oh, you're talking about the books themselves. Yeah. 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 Um, Megamorphs one, which had the Vleek. Book eight, the Alien, which I remember that as being the book where Axe goes to a movie theater, and it's also yep. where Axe phones home. And that one bookends really <laughs> nicely with Andalite Chronicles for how we set this up. It um, very much does. Uh, book nine, the Secret, which was Cassie's book. That's where Vister Three slaps someone. The Termite Queen happens there. Yeah, yeah. and we all play Skunk Mother. Yes, but mm-hmm. they don't breastfeed. That's like also something that comes <laughs> up. Just to be clear, none of us thought that, but we're making that clear to the audience. <laughs> um, Thanks, Ed. But yeah, of course. Uh, but then the Android, which was a Chi. Marco goes to that concert. That we, we go read to the that, yes. we read that in June, I think. It's insane. <laughs> um, they get slippery yeah. at the lake. There's get- jet skis. It's very fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> My God, we read that in June. We're like older now. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. this whole process has aged us. Yeah. Uh, we have like that. It Pandora. also turned my gallbladder into calcium. <laughs> <apparently>. <laughs> well, that might have been book eleven, but uh, that could have been, been book eleven. <laughs> book eleven, the forgotten, which was the Amazon. Our animorphs went to the Amazon. No, they didn't. Only Jake did. Mm-hmm. Well, they all did. But only Jake remembers yes, yeah, that yeah. timeline. Yeah, and they all die. Which they give a pretty flimsy excuse for why Jake gets to remember that timeline. Because Jake also dies in that timeline. He just, like... Woke up ten minutes later when yeah, he would have been like, making it was, the I don't remember yeah. how they worked it out, actually. Shit, I should check. Yeah. Yeah, no, they say, they say like, it's like a conversation with Axe, where Axe is like, oh, yeah, and then he talks about that girl that distracted him in class. Right, yeah. 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 But I think even when we reached the end and we were making sense of it, and I think when we got an email from CJ, I think we were still like, oh, it doesn't actually, we kept theorizing what, how it all held together, but I think our theories kept falling yeah, apart. the flashes yeah. weren't in the right order and stuff. They did. And... They shuffled the order of the flashes, which, like, again, could have just been an editing thing. Like, it, we were trying real hard to line it up, but maybe just, like, some quick change had to happen. And, yeah. And maybe yeah. they were like, oh, we yeah. could have the flashes make sense, or we could have the most interesting one first oh, or something. Oh, I remember... I remember what I theorized. It was like Jake actually died, but the rest of them were being digested. And because Jake. That was my. That was what I thought too. Because Jake died before they went into the fucking. What was it? Like a shop right or something? Uh Before they like did their heist mission and got in the time machine? Or was it was just a ship? It wasn't a time machine, but it's like. Not yet. He like. Falls Sorry, through the real. window and realizes that his like timelines have just reconverged in this moment and is able to stop them from happening because he came back sooner because the others were like just being slowly digested or something. Right, right, yeah. That, and so I they think didn't it, keep he their was memories. Like, his consciousness was free at the same time as he was like beginning the loop. Yeah. So yeah, that was like that was the loose idea is that because he committed to death. Don't do it. Don't do it. (laughs) But just like, it is really dark. It's like, because he was the one who actually That book was extremely dark. Do you remember how Rachel got torn apart by ants? Oh, no. And Jake was just taking bits of her fur and flesh to lead another ant colony to her to kill the ants that that were eating her? So that an ant war would happen on top of her. Yeah. I, like... Stuff in that book was so unpleasant that I think that that's part of why it couldn't possibly... Like, at the end of book nine... We got a grape juice covered viscer. That's true. Like that's fucking that's fucking good television right there. Yeah, it's just some intense whiplash to this run of books. Um, book twelve. So we, that was book eleven, the forgotten. Then we had book twelve, the reaction. Burp croc. Burp croc. Which I didn't realize it was going to be an allergic reaction, but that's yeah. like what it was. Yeah, I I remember that book. I think we had so much fun talking about that book that I remember. It more fondly than I do reading it. Yeah, you didn't love that book. I liked that book a lot. It was very silly. It was very silly. But like, I think I think I do appreciate it more in retrospect too, because it 
it was so silly. And Andalite Chronicles was silly in in part two, like when they're driving the Mustang and everything. But I <laughs> I miss the silliness of the main series books mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Same, uh, yeah, same. I miss yeah. our kids. Our kids. I said it again. Our, uh, our kids. Yeah. Our children. They'd be about your age now. <laughs> So I was thinking about this, right? And I was thinking about how to put it. And I'm like, so in season one, in our first seven books, and then really kind of in book eight with Axe, but Axe Axe has to do both in one here. So like Axe is a little bit in the first group, a little bit in the second group. Major arc one, if you'll call it that, like up to We Meet the Elemist, I would call like... You know, we talked about the fine, you know, reason to fight moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, we, mm-hmm. what did we call it? Why I fight. Yeah. Why I fight. That's it. We talked about the why I fight moment. I would call that like Spider-Man 1. Mm-hmm. And I would definitely call these books like the Spider-Man 2 of the books where it's like we're realizing the negatives that come along mm-hmm. with what happens. You know, even to a certain point, you know, even an amazing Spider-Man 2, like a death of Gwen Stacy kind of moment in some of these. Mm-hmm. Like we're we're really dealing with the consequences of the powers that we have and not just the powers that we have, but how we've chosen to use them. Mm-hmm. Mm. And what it means for the people around us, especially in like Cassie's book, I think as much as the death of the forest is like the death of Gwen Stacy to her, her big moment, I think, was realizing that that skunk got shot because of her. Mm-hmm. Like, because if you remember, the skunk they found had been hit by a dragon beam mm-hmm. that was only fired because they had attempted to infiltrate the compound. Right. Right. So, like, and in The Alien, Axe has a whole death of innocence about his whole culture. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, he realizes a lot of the propaganda, and he realizes his role in having furthered it in the past. And he, this is why his is sort of more still, like, in the beginning, but he does have that death of innocence that I feel like is present in all these books. Because I feel like Rachel has a death of innocence and, in like, the crush she had on Jeremy Jason McColl was, I mean, it's sort of the most innocent kind of crush you can have as, like, a young teen where it's, like, on a totally unattainable person and it's, like, not real and it's totally imaginary. And then she not only, like, actually meets this guy, but he he's not just yerked. He, like, agreed to be yerked. He's a control, like, a voluntary yeah. controller. And so that was, like, a death in her eyes of, like, a part of herself, I feel yeah. like. Jake kind of has and, this nightmare scenario of leadership, like, realizing mm-hmm. yeah. like, the impossibility of being a leader and also, like, the impossible situation, he's, um, the position he's been put in as a leader. And also that, like, everyone does actually... But Book 11 was kind of, like, everyone still kept looking to him and blaming him for things even as he was being put into that position by them. Right. You know? And then in the Android, I really think as much as Marco is, like, gung... Like, Marco has two modes, right? He has, I don't want anything to do with this, and he has gung-ho, let's kick some butt. Mm -hmm. But I think at his heart, he is sort of a pacifistic person who doesn't want this, especially, like, with the introduction of his mom being Visser 2. Like, he really doesn't want... Visser 1. Sorry, you're right, Visser 1. I don't know why I said Visser 2. We have no idea who Visser 2 is. We have no idea about (laughs) Visser 2. Frankly, it could be me. (laughs) You're right. But, like, I really feel like, and maybe it was for the audience, too, that, like, I saw someone mention in a thread recently, I don't remember if it was on Reddit or Facebook, but, like, someone was talking about how the the books seem to glorify pacifism, but ultimately say that it doesn't work. Mm. Like, Mm. and I feel like that's what we get in book 10, right? We get these pacifists who won't do anything, but then they do agree to do something and they seem to be a weapon that could end everything and they choose to remove themselves from the board. Mm-hmm. I do agree with that assessment. It's like we we are putting these kids in situations where they're having to like decide against like minor and major atrocities on the reg. Mm-hmm. And like it's it's pretty like to say that the books are pushing for pacifism, it's like it's like an anti-war book would make pacifism look good. This book is like on its journey to making pacifism look good, maybe, but like maybe. Um, and I think it's a little bit like yeah. I don't think they fully figured out their feelings and thoughts on like some of that felt a little half baked with the chi because 
the thing I remember we really got stuck on was that the book seemed to have say it would have been noble and if we like the, that it was noble that the chi were pacifistic even as enslaved people building the pyramids and we were like oh, right. actually like yeah like that that's because it's that a weird territory work. because it's yeah, like yeah it's actually noble to overthrow people who are forced right. right and yeah. especially right. being being androids who were programmed to be pacifists yeah. and as much as we hear them say that well the pemalites were completely pacifists and that's why they didn't even know how to fight back when the howlers came the pemalites made the chi they coded the chi yeah yeah we we're getting a totally one-sided story on whatever yeah. happened in that in that world but, like, literally the journey they're on is to find something powerful enough to override their pacifistic programming. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. so that they can, yeah. like, break the laws of robotics. Yeah. Which, like, even that thought goes beyond what they conceptually had outlined with the idea that they were programmed to be pacifistic. Like, it just doesn't... It's, like, such a weird metaphysical yeah. circular logic. Yeah. That, but the important part of the chi, I think, or at least a, an important part of the chi in terms of Marco's development, and also just the development, that one kind of feels like it applies to all of the Animorphs, is that Marco witnesses, what was his name? Eric? Eric. Eric King. Eric. Yeah, Eric with a K. If he commits violence... He rem- doesn't he remember every moment at every He remembers point? everything and it really harms him. And so they realize that, oh, we actually, if the things that we're now doing as Animorphs, if we re- actually remembered the full weight of what we were doing at any given moment, we would be driven mad by it. Like it makes sense. It's like the effects of the violence that they're already participating in because they yeah. are defending their planet they're fighting the irks so Mm -hmm. and so it's definitely there's a lot of like i think that goes back to this cost there's a lot of what is the cost of how our lives have changed like what is the cost of being an animorph that we're yeah totally and yeah the spider-man 2 effect yeah 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 Yeah. 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 (laughs) so now we have in the next series of course we can look forward to spider-man Three, Spider-Man 3, yeah. which I think we're going to get into some... Are we going to start getting into some Ghost Riders? Because that feels like some Not Spider-Man yet. 3 shit. I think shit. that's in the 20s. Not yet? All right. <laughs> That'll be some Spider-Man 3 shit for sure. <laughs> um, yes, yeah. Do we want to... I have the list here of what we're going to read. Like our narrators? I think... Seasons. I think... We, yes. Or, I, I think, think we, we should go through... About that with... And I would like oh, yeah, to... Yeah. I would like to... Yeah, we have more to talk about. But I would like to play a game here. If y'all will humor me. I would like, so the titles so far, like, you know, The Forgotten, like, come on. Like, That's the reaction, it it's an allergic reaction. Yeah. But I'm, I think we're cottoning on to, like, what, how these titles kind of work. And so, like, um, I I would like to take a guess at what the plot is. Of the next um, six books that yeah, we're talking about. So, like, about here, I'll, I'll kick us off. I'll kick us off for the first one. So, we have a list here. The first one we would be reading would be book 13, The Change, Tobias. The, the book, in this book, Tobias collects enough pennies off the ground to start a, a high-yield savings <laughs> account and is able <laughs> to... To buy some piece of equipment that the anim- animorphs need yes. to, to fell the yurks or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But, like, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, when I hear the change, nothing is safe anymore. Yeah. Like, it could mm-hmm. be that literal. They could be pulling a fast one. Okay, what Very about this? True. What if the change is that Tob- <laughs> Tobias grows up and he moves out of Jake's drawer? Whoa, and mm-hmm. goes to Bird College. Goes to Bird yeah. College. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so cute. Him in the little dormitories. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, um, okay. We do start season three with Tobias narrating, which we haven't Very had. Very excited. We've seen him narrate in Megamorphs, which also we should talk a little bit about Megamorphs, because I feel like we've <laughs> totally... <laughs> no? <laughs> no, we can talk about Megamorphs. They dropped the whale. Um, they if, did if drop they, the whale. They dropped the fucking whale, yeah. dude. That's like, like it's more than jumping the shark. It got good then. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do think of that um, as like our... Um, as our page turner, like our blockbuster. And I think we talked about it that way at the time, but it was just so oh, it was exciting. So good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a very exciting. Read. Um the thing that we have to like it is it, the book's called The Change. It's very hard not to hope that maybe Tobias starts 
morphing again. Like, I feel like that would be... That would uh, be a nice thing to hope for. I It would solve the problem I, of Tobias's plot stagnancy, too, I feel like. Yeah, uh-huh, he'd be able to uh-huh. do other things. Yeah. Knowing what we know about about Tobias and, like, about everything, we don't know... We know that the Andalites didn't have a way to bring Nothlets back. Is it going to be some sort of tapping into the deep part Andalite that is his oh, Elfangor yeah. lineage? Or, said, like, mm, yeah. oh. or is it just the Elemist? I feel like... Uh, right, is the Elemist just going to come back into play? So, so next we have Book 14, The Unknown, which is Cassie narrated. And... With this one, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking <laughs> I'm thinking that the whole book starts off with her in a classroom and Miss Paloma asks a question for pop quiz. All right. And she just doesn't know what the answer is, but then somebody else gets it and she realizes that that person must be a yerk because uh because they know the answer to this question. Oh, it's like and that episode the- of Doctor Who where he's like a teacher at that school where they're using alien technology to like do something to the kids' brains, and he's like, "How long is the Great Wall of China?" He like asks increasingly ridiculous questions, yes, and he's like, "How yes. long is the Great Wall of China?" And the kids like, "Blah blah blah,", blah. and he's like, "In cubits," and he just spits out the answer. Right. It's like, right, exactly, something is wrong. But, then, but the reason why it's called the unknown is because Cassie goes home and was like, "I didn't know the answers to any of those questions." <laughs> oh my god, that would be a, a low stakes book. That would be a change of pace. <laughs> uh, well, what do you think it's about? I have no idea. I think The Unknown is a terrible title. <laughs> that one, yeah, that one's a real mystery for me. They're there, just going somewhere a, new. They're doing something they don't know. There's a short story called The Unnameable, where, like, three people are sitting in a graveyard describing some horrible thing they've seen, but they get to the end of it, they're like, I don't know what that was. It's like, what should we call it? I guess we'll call it The Unnameable. And I, I could see that being the end of The Unknown as well. The Escape, I, I want to take a stab at. I think it's gonna be about i don't know if they'll be successful i think it's gonna be about trying to get marco's mom back Ooh. oh i thought it would be about them having to go on Penn and teller's fool us as magicians <laughs> and that be, <laughs> it'd, be a that'd sca- be it'd be an escape it's trick an escape of some artist. sort yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> that's that's just what popped i think in my you're uh head. Uh, pitching books that we'll get in the 20s and 30s, Chris. I think you're getting a lot. They've still got some sense of the universe they're working with right now. Um, oh, come now. I think I Penn and Teller were big in the 80s and in the 90s as well. Okay, so book 16, we've got The Warning, Jake. Mm. Now, here's what I think for this. I think <laughs> they... I think this book is, um, I know you've already got a better idea, Chris. No, 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 no. <laughs> You just can't wait no, to say I'm it. so excited to hear yours. I'm so excited to hear yours. I, think, I am. I, I am. Stop. <laughs> it's, just, making, it's getting ramped up. Chris, You're taking a long time to say it. I'm getting more and more Chris excited. Chris has the biggest smile on their face, and it's very unsettling. <laughs> um... um What was I even going to say? Oh, I think we get another Chi-like scenario where they get a warning. Some other group, some other Animorphs from a different race or different um, people who are like the Animorphs and something that happened in their fight against the Yerks. Uh, So like some sort of rebellion. Yeah, You don't necessarily mean a group of Morphers, but like a a group that's fighting the Yerks. Maybe from Mountain Taxons or Port Bajir. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, or just even another gang of humans who figured it out. I mean, there's conspiracy theorists everywhere. And we had a, in book three, that guy running through the woods that Tobias helped. Yeah. Like maybe that guy oh. starts to put it together. And the woman in the woods in Megamorphs. Who oh, knew about the she Yerks. was, yeah. Yeah. Maybe She's coming like back. humans are starting to pick up on it. Yeah, she better. She fucking better. I hope I wanted her to be year, someone's though. mom at one point. Because I love getting to learn more about the taxons, but I really want to know more about the horse. Now, what Cheer. I was thinking for this book... Was that they have to... So oh, you were thinking Rachel's of something, on, Chris? You, you had an idea? Yeah. From you? No, I had this thought going into this meeting, but I was <laughs> laughing in my anticipation. For, so my thought is Jake gets put on student council and has to plan the next prom. <laughs> and it goes really horribly. And Jake at some point slightly abuses his power and Chapman has to give him a warning. <laughs> Yeah, that's Chapman's that like, sounds fun. I would yeah? suspend you. I would suspend you, but you're a good kid. <laughs> 
your brother Tom is a high-ranking Yerk. I'm just going to give you a warning. Can I tell you, for some reason, this is making me think. I remember the... <laughs> Uh, I feel like this reveals something like basic about who I am as a person as a, or as a kid. I remember thinking, oh, wouldn't it be cool if you had Animorphs powers if you had your friend turn into a really cool pet and then you brought them in for show and tell and it was like <laughs> actually your friend. That's that so is cute. the cutest thing You turned into ever. a cool pet and then they brought it. Everybody <laughs> loves me. <laughs> Just love me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that what that reveals? <laughs> Do, I think it does. I think it's I want everyone to pay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so maybe that's the underground. <laughs> yeah, book 17, The Underground, narrated by Rachel. This is obviously the one in which she dies, and they bury her six <laughs> feet underground. <laughs> Oh, you All don't right. think it's when we meet the dwarven race equivalent of this? Ooh, <laughs> the lizard people who live under the crust. Oh my god! Oh my god! Are, I, are, oh my god! They need lizard people. Actually, I mean it's Hork Bajir, but uh, yeah. I mean, how else would you run a, a globalist uh, Illuminati uh, conspiracy? Yeah. Or do you think that this is a riff off of? Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Underground, oh. and this is actually yo, and she's so we're gonna thug. do like a world tour on her skateboard, yo. Yes. and Bam Margera will be there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, can't wait for Rachel book seventeen. Skate. Rachel could skate. <laughs> no, Cassie's the skater. The, wh- well, the rivals. What was it, Eric? Was it Eric Sparrow or something? Was the name of your friend in that game who was horrible oh, yeah. and like ripped you off multiple times or something? something and like, like also, yeah, like at the end of the game, like basically stole your footage and you're still friends with him for some yeah, reason. Yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah, underground. I feel like maybe they go back, actually go back to maybe they finally destroy the that Yerk pool. pool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that dude, would be that would be so I think great. the world tour is a much better idea. Uh, well, maybe they go on tour after they destroy the York, like a book tour. Maybe after. they destroy it by grinding around the rim, by yeah! rimming the York oh, pool. By, rim by grinding. rimming the York pool. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I can't wait to have an episode titled Rimming the York pool. <laughs> maybe we just, maybe we try and go for a streak and see how many titles we can get with rimming in it in the, in con- like, <laughs> <laughs> Book 18, <laughs> The Decision, Axe. Mm-hmm. Axe makes the decision to... No, I don't know. I got nothing for to this be, uh, I, I was going to go for a Sophie's Choice book. I was going to say he just decides which of his kids lives and dies. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. He has kids by book 18. <laughs> yeah, you know, the Andalites, they work fast. We still didn't really talk about Megamorphs. Yeah, we you didn't talk about Megamorphs yet. Yeah, let's, let's, talk, do, about let's talk about Megamorphs. So uh, I know it's the first one we read, and we're leaving it for last. But we do, we do need to talk about Megamorphs. And I know it's like sort of it's it's in canon, but it doesn't get referred to a lot because it's sort of like outside. I feel like it was like in case you didn't convince your parents to buy you the Megamorphs books or something. But like the Valique was like objectively wild, right? Yeah. Like this this energy eating monster. That's actually a swarm. Yeah. That they trained to eat a different kind of energy, or I think they said they like bioengineered it. Yeah, which is crazy because it's like, how did it only detect morphing? And also, like, if you can bioengineer that level of a of a creature, why can't they teach any creature to detect morphing energy? Yeah. Right. Yeah. We also we got Rachel's amnesia, which was a pretty wild set of circumstances for any of the characters to find them in because she had to relearn yes. who she was. Yeah. And that brought up a lot of interesting character work with her actually i think like especially when she was getting remembering cassie and how much she cared about cassie like so yeah. that was the kind of friendship dynamic that i think i was missing in book 12 when we were getting a lot of them like i felt like there were mm. some really good moments between the two of them as cassie is reteaching her who she is yeah, yeah. chunks of darlene also, happened there the party chunks, chunks of darlene, of darlene. Axe and, no, Axe and marco made darlene. out in the Basement. They played yes. seven yes. Yes. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and Not also mention- the woman in the woods. We sort of talked about her earlier, yeah. but the woman who was stealing clothes and making a fake shop in the woods who seems to know about the Yerks, who mm-hmm. seems to be an escaped con- an controller. An human who is, like, out there in the world. Which, right. at that point, we had not yet—is this true? We had not yeah. yet seen 
the Yerks killing all the unyerked controllers. Like, because I believe it's book, because they, they destroy the Candrona in book eight, or I'm sorry, in book seven. And then in book eight, I think with Axe, is that when we start to see the people wigging out? Yeah. 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 Or is that in Megamorphs? No, I think it's in, I think it's That was book eight. eight. Yeah. Yeah. That was where the teacher yeah. started the Because change. Axe couldn't tell them anything because it was. It was Ciro's kindness. He He's like, I, and that's how they figured him out. They were like, you know what's happening to these people and you're not telling yeah. us. Yeah, well, Book 8 was mm-hmm. really good. They're like, yeah, we thought really we did something good destroying the Candrona and you're telling us they're just going to kill the people who were infested. Like, yeah. Right. Book 8 is where I learned what a big wheel was, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, we don't get another Megamorphs uh, in this Next cycle. I think we're starting. Or another Chronicles. Season. It's going to be just just main series books. Just main in series books. Next I'm quote unquote absolutely season. Absolutely fine with that. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked on it. Yeah, it'll be nice to get back to normal for a while and get and get uh, sick of our kids I, again. Yeah. With the I did like I like Megamorphs a lot. I I understand why it gets crap. It was ridiculous it was silly but it was a really nice change of pace too to get like all of it was it did and i think if i'm not mistaken i think it's the next megamorphs that gets most of the crap yeah or or -hmm. perhaps there's like four megamorphs books and the valik and the whale and like all that i don't know we saw the whale in book four but seeing the whale again and then it, it getting the reminder of the whale closer to Andalite Chronicles to compare it to the the Taxon Mother Hive. Mm-hmm. And, like, my, my new theory that every creature has some sort of, like, every planet has this creature that has some sort of primordial understanding. Like... Mm. The whale, the living And hive. it seems yeah. like it's whales for us and, like, maybe the living hive for taxons. Yeah. Unless the whale is, like, the chi. Like, like you suspect the chi is, and it, we, mm. it won't come back again. If they can train Valik to smell morphing, and then it really is that easy. Like, why don't they just train bloodhounds to do it? Like, I'm imagining that thing of like, we have a swatch of the 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 murderer's clothing, and we're gonna have the dog smell it, and we're gonna go hunt them in the like. like, If you can biologically engineer something to change what it eats, why are we not just like? The the idea that they can do that, but they don't just have, like, a scan of the Earth up and running at all times that detects spikes of morphing energy is, like, a it's little true. ridiculous. It's true. It is. Yeah, that's a good but point. But that's, that's I mean, who our Visser is. He's not someone... He's someone who starts many projects but doesn't finish them. Oh, uh, I can relate. Oh, so I find that very relatable. Well, that's yeah. consistent with how we <laughs> feel about Visser 3. That's <laughs> true. You know, yeah. it's really... You know how they... Uh, maybe you two are a little older, so I don't know how much SpongeBob you watched, but like a lot of people are like growing up is realizing that Squidward was the most relatable character on SpongeBob, and I'm like oh, maybe God. growing oh, up God. is realizing that Visser Three was the most relatable character in Animorphs. <laughs> yeah, aside aside from the murder, aside from the murder, but you yeah. know what? You're trying to climb the ranks. You gotta please the boss, and you mm-hmm. want to do it. You want to live your art, and it's hard to do both. It's hard to do both. We all know. We all know. Sometimes you gotta murder. (laughs) Who said that? Who said that? I don't know. Who said that? (laughs) That was just straight out of my soul. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) Oh man. So, um, what's our plan going forward? Well, I think we should just end it here. I think um, this is a good spot to As end the whole know, series. As we all know, Spider-Man 2 is the best Spider-Man ending point. Spider-Man 2 is the best ending point of the <laughs> So Spider- it's actually Spider-Man's. such a good ending point that for the amazing Spider-Man, they didn't even make a three. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They just put it in, uh, in the... The Andrew Guard film. <sighs> they were okay. Well, you know, the I would say that... The first one I actually really liked. The second one had some major structural issues. So this might be this might be a little high concept. But I think what we should do is, guys, we have to follow our inner viscer, okay? Like, if we've burned out on Animorphs, maybe it's time that we do something different. Now, hold on. Before you cut me off, maybe we start a new podcast, same RSS feed, called The Anadorks. And it's just that you say it a little different. 
There's like a little accent the next, over the uh, O. The Anadorks. Yeah, exactly. Instead of the Anadorks, it's the Anadorks. And now we do the Anadorks and we do the next five or six books and um, maybe, a, maybe a guest here and there. Um, and like, uh, and, and, uh, more fun and hijinks. Um, but it's a totally new podcast. I'm going to do Eddie's part. Eddie's going to do Miranda's part. Miranda, I'm so sorry. You're going to have to do my part. <laughs> and it's, yeah, but I think it's going to be so, a subtle okay. difference because Miranda, our impressions of each other, like for example, Miranda, do your impression of me right now. I'm Miranda doing an impression of Chris right now. See, it's spot on. It's Re- spot recently on. Recently, we found you can't tell the, the difference. limitations of the audio medium with our silent laughter, but now we're finding the strengths of it. The the, the strengths of it. The advantages of it. Um, okay, we are talking. That's right. I'm Chris, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. and this is still Eddie. And you can't prove me wrong. Like, <laughs> um, we do. I don't think we should say, make any promises yet by saying the names of who we're planning to interview, but we do have ideas for interviews, and we are in And we are in talks yes. with some people. Yes. Yeah, like communications have been issued. We're not just, you know, we're not just talking about it on the podcast this time. We're, we're putting it in digital ink. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you can expect to hear from our mothers. I'm just kidding. That's not going to happen. Honestly, the, not Marie doing Lisa, a mom's the Marie and Lisa Anadorks Companion podcast doing... is what people I want. People would put us what out of our business. People about? would stop. <laughs> <and> people, <laughs> what are they talking about on those walks? <laughs> no, I what are they talking about? We should just record their walks. I think everybody would like it a lot better. <laughs> their, pod, their companion podcast is two people who have not read the Animorphs listening to Anadorks trying to make sense what those books are about. Maybe they could do a sex education podcast. Yeah. Oh, they do they both all, love they sex both education. Like that series. That's true. Yeah. It's going to be called, yeah, it's going to be called uh, Amy's Emotional Support Goat. Yeah. Because that's all mom thinks about anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she said to me today, because we was, my parents showed me this show and we were taking a break between seasons three and four because we have too much TV now to watch. One of the characters gets like, it's supposed to be a pet for bonding as a couple and also emotional support, but they didn't have anyone who could take care of it. So this character is just going everywhere with, a, with like a mini goat. Yeah. She's one of my she favorite takes it characters. To school. She's, She's a good character. Yeah. Send us emails, five star reviews, <laughs> um, and uh, we have a Patreon. Please leave us Every five star helps. reviews and, yeah, if and tell you, your friends. If you know, like, if you want to interact with us on social media, like, please do because, like, we're yeah, we're actually just nervous to start. Like, we're no, yeah, we're still hanging on the wall. Like, we're at the middle school dance and we're on the wall. You know what I mean? And we're waiting yeah, for someone yeah. to come up to us. So, if you want to engage yes. with us on social media, that would be great. We're because- sending wild <laughs> signals, by the way. If we're talking about like rimming the pocket verse on the wall at our first <laughs> dance, like that's <laughs> wild energy. That's like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like prepared to do one thing, but can't even say hello or wave well, or make eye contact. That's it's been very true yeah, yeah, of yeah, yeah, the people yeah, yeah. that I've known in my queer friend circles. So, like, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I think it tracks. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say, may the Candrona shine, shine and strengthen strength you, you all. until we find another. I don't know if they're ever gonna say that again in the series, but that's um, true. Uh, we'll, I say we'll it. Keep every an day. eye out for mm-hmm. other catchphrases. When I sign off from work. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually my, my like, uh, email yeah, sign I off. I slack it. May the, I slack may the it. Yeah, shine just and just may the you, shine Miranda. and strike you all. Thanks for listening to Anadorks. We'll be back soon with lots more to say. Until the Andalites return, or at least until next time. See you soon.